and paying attention to the spine in particular, sort of not stress, no stress in the body, but just the, where you're, you're straight up and down. The chest is open, so you can you know, easily breathe in. I just do a scanning of the body, just starting at the top of the head, and slowly work down through the face, the neck and the shoulders, down through the arms, down the front of the body, come back through the legs. And if you notice any tension at all, just, just consciously allow that to relax. You don't have to really do anything, but if you just notice the tension, it can melt away. So just becoming present with the, with the body primarily. And if during the, the meditations the thoughts or planning or worrying comes up, you can just note it and say, no, not right now. This is a gift to yourself to just be present for the next say, two and a half, three hours that we're here together. And the reason I like this element of practice, being in nature, and I'm going to give you the secret right from the very beginning, there's, there's two factors we really need to cultivate to have success in our practice. We don't always like the word success, but just to have good results, to be able to merge with our meditation object. And that's attention, just having an interest. It's really interest, taking an interest in what we're doing. And the other is joy really to enjoy your meditation. And you know, mostly we get instructions on your know, body awareness or breath meditation. And you know, sometimes our bodies do hurt or it's uh, not always pleasant you know, being in a situation. It might be too much noise or just there can be distractions. And so I think a lot of times we can sort of force ourselves to try to meditate in a way that we have a preconceived idea of what that is. And so there can be you know, struggles. But if we're struggling, we're, we're actually not going to want to do the practice. We're not going to you know, start fantasizing about what we're going to do afterwards or thinking about what we want to do. So it's finding something that's, that's, that's interesting and engaging. Many people can find that through meditation, such as uh, metta, any of the Brahma Viharas. And I like these meditations. It's, it's using the mind to imagine you know, creating those feelings of, of goodwill and joy. And so, like with the loving kindness meditation, you're, you're thinking of. If you start with yourself, you're remembering times of when you were happy, when you were joyful, and kind of reliving those. So obviously, if you're remembering joy, it's, it's joyful. And then with that meditation, it goes on to other, other beings, other doing our friends and teachers and family members, and imagining them being joyful. So it's, it's kind of an easy meditation to do. You know how to, if you know how to, to do that correctly. And oftentimes, if we do come from, say, stress in our lives, through work or family or what, however we, we feel stress in our lives, just having a meditation, like coming back to the body or to the breath, you know, if that is done correctly, there's going to be a, quite a joy there too. Just like you said, I'll just like tune into the body. It's just sometimes you can feel the energy coursing through the body, the heat, 
I mean, the movement of air, especially if we're out, outside, you'll be able to feel that on the skin. And even just for two or three seconds, if the mind is active, just for two or three seconds, you say, no, I'm just going to, let's just pay attention to the sensations on the skin. You can do that, and if you, just in those few seconds, it's, it's so much more refreshing than being caught up in a worry or a doubt or various thoughts. And it's not that we have to be able to keep our attention on that, but every time we bring it back, that's one of the kind of definitions of mindfulness. I remember Joseph Goldstein was saying that. It's like every time you get lost in a meditation, that's an opportunity to come back. So just continually, mindfulness is just remembering to come back, come back, come back to the body, come back to the whatever meditation subject you picked up. And if we can find a meditation object that has interest for us, then it's easy to come back to it, or we won't even, we won't even want to leave it. And so just imagine right now, it's like when you find something interesting, what happens to your mind when you find an interest in something? Just even think about like the last thing or something that you know would bring interest to you. And just imagine what your mind does. I'm just I'm, I'm watching all of you right now, and I noticed several people did this. There's when you take interest, like you sit up. It's like, oh, and your mind kind of your head turns sideways. Like, oh, that's interesting. You know, you're you're noticing something in a new way, or you're getting absorbed into that object. You know, the spine straightens. The the mind opens up. It's looking for new possibilities. When we, when we go outside, we don't really have any preconceived idea of how to do this meditation. Henry David Thoreau, in an essay on walking, would mention that he would set off every day. He'd go for long walks. And uh, he'd say he'd often have a preconceived idea of where he was going to go or what he was going to do. He said, inevitably, he would not do that. He'd end up someplace else. There, something would grab his attention, or the, the, the wind was blowing, and he wanted to walk into the wind, which took him a different direction, or he noticed a fragrance of flowers, or the smell, and went to investigate it, or he would notice maybe the tracks of an animal and walk through. I wonder what that was. And, see some fresh footprints or animal prints, and he'd follow them. So he would just let nature sort of guide him wherever, wherever it took him. And so as we go out, just pay attention to, to that about yourself. Like what, do you see anything inviting? Do you see anything that brings your attention towards it? And if nothing does, that's fine. You can just walk around and wander and, and you know, watch watch the mind in that. Or if this doesn't appeal to you, then you could just do you know, walking meditation like you would normally do, just walking back in a straight line. This morning I was sitting up on one of the balconies up on the second floor. And it was, for myself, I was just sitting there and where I just came from, we still have three feet of snow on the ground. And so I was sitting there basking in the sun and just feeling the, the, the joy, the, the warmth of the sun. And it was variable cloudiness was coming through. So it'd be going from this real warm temperature and almost seemed like it was too hot. And then literally the next second, a cloud would go over and it would be freezing cold. 
<coughs> yeah, just <coughs> taking joy in that, just this, just noticing the, the temperature change and the, the feeling of the skin with that, and then two minutes later the sun would come out again. And so you could, you know, here with the shadows, you know, if, if that interests you, if you find that, oh, that's really interesting, I could, how, how does my mind feel when I'm in the sun? And you can be underneath Leave one of these eaves here on the side of the building and just do that as a practice. Just stand in the sun and feel it on your, on your skin, on your body. Notice how your mind feels with that. And then take two steps over into the shadow and pay attention to the change, the variability there, what that does. And it's not, it's actually not the object that we're uh, say if we're, if we're paying attention to something like say that the, the change of temperature on the skin or you might get uh, absorbed into you know, all the colors you might find a a, a flower it's just the, the color of the flower just draws you in or the you know, the fresh green leaves you might just go and maybe you've never ever really looked at a leaf really closely as you get up and start noticing all the little details and also, as I was sitting on the roof, I was just marveling at the architecture of this building and just noticing the, you know, let's say, the element practice. The, you know, the, the, there was the blue sky, there was the wind, there was the, the temperature of the sun, there was still sound of, of water dripping from the, the eaves from the rain we had this morning, and then just the the stones in the buildings. You got the earth element there as well. There's all these, you know, all the elements. Even though we're in the city, they're, just, they're all around us. And as I was looking at the stones, I was like, they just, you know, they're this beautiful craftsmanship of. Uh, and they're not all the same. It's like different colored stones. Some of them are chiseled. You know, some of the bricks, they have different. You know, shapes to the bricks that are in, in the wall. And Ajahn Sona, the, the abbot at Birkin, uh, once described you know, architecture as frozen music. And as I was watching, you know, looking at this building, it's like, it's like every single brick, how it's laid in there is sort of like a musical note of every single, you know, it's like an orchestra. This building is an orchestra. And each stone is is, is you know, one note that each instrument plays and it's, we're, we're seeing it just in a frozen moment but yet if you look at it closely it's like it's still changing you, know, you can see where parts of this building have already decayed and eroded away and they put new plaster in or they put in new stones or some of the stones the tiles are broken so even though it's this frozen moment in time it's still moving it's still changing it's still an orchestra playing symphony. It's like having interest in that in something like the architecture. You can see the mind get kind of get absorbed in that and studying that. And just, even just looking at a dried section of paint on a windowsill and seeing where it's cracked and how it's cracked and then going over to the next window and seeing how it's similar or different. The mind can be surprised. The mind might just really get absorbed into something, but it's not the object. It's not the. Uh, it's not the color. It's not. It's not the wind that's important. The in, The what's important is the interest. It's your own mind. How does your mind react to allowing yourself to explore these elements or these these uh, visions, the casinas? in finding some that bring you joy. So let's just sit for about five minutes. Let you just sort of digest that and kind of contemplate that or you can let your imaginations go with that. And then yeah, I have the bell. This is an all ringing bell. How should people go? Yeah, maybe it's just kind of dispersive. Yeah.
So yeah, I think most of you have been here before, so just go where, where you feel the interest will draw you the most. And then I'll, about a half hour, 3.15 or... So yeah, about uh, 2.15, somebody will ring a bell and we'll come back in and do a sitting. And again, just try to go from sitting to the walking meditation. It's just one continuous meditation.
And when we transition to the next period, Henry David Thoreau, when he described his walking, he described it as sauntering. And he derives the word of, of, uh, of being on pilgrimage, walking to the Holy Land, this sauntering the Saint Therese, a saint walking the land. Or a homeless one too. And so when we're out here just walking, if you want to just do walking meditation and notice the elements that way, that's fine. Or if you just want to just wander and see what grabs your attention. Even if you just want to, if there's a bench or some place you want to sit and just, just pay attention to the elements. Anything is everything is fine to do that. And what he mentions is, is like when you're sauntering, when you're on a holy pilgrimage, it's not the end destination that's the holy land. The destin it's the how you are when you're on the walk. Can you walk in holiness? And you have attention and you have joy. That's holiness. <laughs>